Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Legends of Zelda livestream series. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at a couple of things uh, progressing with our Zelda game. So we are going to be taking a look first of all at setting up a jump animation because as of right now when you walk forwards and jump you can see it just continues to run which is not great and the same goes for when you stand on the spot and try run as well in addition to that what we're also going to be doing is showing you how you can set up some basic regeneration complete with a sound effect for your health and also for your magic so we're going to be breaking that down in a nice easy simple to follow way that you guys can understand as well now before I go any further, what I would like to mention is that you are going to need the latest version of the Zelda project files with the latest sound effects in there, as we will be using a little sound that's going to tick when the player gets a little bit of health. So every couple of seconds, you can go tick, 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 tick as the health regenerates. If you want access to that, once again, you can find the link for that in the description. Also, if you guys, um, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters that have made this possible, and if you want the completed project file as a Patreon, you do have access to that, so if you just check out your rewards email, you will have everything you need. Also, if you have any questions and you want some help following along, um, what I would advise is that you check out our Discord server, which has over a thousand of uh, Unreal Engine 4 developers, and many of which are actually following along with this series. So either myself, my moderators, or a community member should be able to help you out with that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight in. So let's start off with that jump animation. So with this, what we need to do then is open up our animation blueprint for the character, and then we need to set up a state for the jump. So what we're going to need to do then, ignore the event graph, just go to the anim graph in the top left here, and then just go to your state machine. Within here, we need to create that jump state. So what we're going to do is, because we want the player to be able to jump from the idle state, and also from the walking state, we need to link it between the two of these. So what I'm going to do is just drag up from idle, add a state with the name jump. And you'll notice now we've got a pin going from idle to jump. Do the same thing from walk and run to jump as well. So they can go into that state from either of those. Now also we want them to be able to go back. So from your jump, go back to your idle and also from your jump, go to your walk and run and you should have something which looks a little bit like this. So what we need to do then is go into our jump and within here we need to add our link jump animation. Now for me I've already retargeted it but if you haven't done that already just go to animations, type in jump, double click this and it's going to ask you if you want to retarget it, press yes and then from there you can start to use it in your asset browser. I've also renamed it as well to link underscore jump so I could find that a little bit easier. If you want to rename it just right click it in the content browser and you can do that really easily. So moving on from there what we need to do now then is set up some transitional rules which are going to tell the engine exactly when it should go into that jump state or when it should go from jump to idle or from jump to walk and run. And to do that, to power that, we actually need a variable within this event graph which is going to contain the information for whether or not the player is in the air. And the way we're going to do this is go to our event graph and we're going to access the character movement component. Within there, there is actually a variable for falling, which actually already tells us whether or not the player is in the air. So as third person character, within your event graph, just drag out from there and type in get character movement. Scroll down all the way to the bottom and you should have a little blue man um, next to it saying get character movement. With this, what we're going to do is drag out and type in get is 
falling or get falling rather. Let's see if we can find this. Or type in falling and it is is falling. And with this, you get a return value, which is red, which means it's a Boolean, which is a true or false variable. With this, we are gonna promote this to a variable called is falling. And you can see me renaming this in the bottom left hand corner. So with this, after we set the speed, you wanna set is falling and you're gonna get that information from the character movement, which is perfect. Compile this and we should be good to go. Go back to our state machine now and we can start working on these transitional rules. So the first one, I'm just gonna try and keep this nice and slow and break it down nice and easy for you guys, is gonna be going from idle to jump. And if you hover over this, what it should do is tell you that it's idle to jump. So idle to jump is the first one we wanna do. Double click this. And then for this, we want it to go into this jump animation simply if the character is falling. Moving on from there, if I go back to my state machine for going from jump to idle, we're gonna do the same thing, but we need to reverse it. So we want it to go into the jump, uh, sorry, back into idle if the player is not falling. So what we're gonna do, drag out from falling and just type in not and use the not boolean to do that. So now if it's not falling, it's gonna go back from jump to idle. Compile this and you can see we are getting through these transitional rules pretty quick. Go back to your state machine and then within here, what we're gonna do is start off with this one here from walk run to jump. Once again, we want them to go into there if they are simply falling. However, for the event graph, uh, sorry, however, for the last one, which is jump to walk run, you need to check to see whether or not the player is not falling and also if they're moving because we don't, we, you know, we want to tell the engine to go to idle or walk and run. We want it to go to walk and run only if they are moving. So what I'm going to do is from jump to walk run, inside of here is falling, is not, so is not falling. And then we also need to run a check to see whether or not they're also moving. So the way I'm gonna do this is get speed and then do a check to see float greater than or equal to 10. And then with this, we need to find a way to hook up both of these into here. So what I'm gonna do is simply type in and and use the and boolean to convert this. So what it's gonna do returns logical um, and true if both of them are true and put it into here. Compile this now, all of our errors are gone and what we will find is if we run and jump, it's going to jump. If we stand still and jump, it's gonna work and it is gonna do absolutely everything that we need it to. So moving on from here, it is time to take a moment and focus on the health regeneration and we'll get straight into that in just a second. Okay, so now that we've got our jumping set up, we can take some time to work on both the health and the magic regeneration. So with this, what we're gonna need to do then is set up a little bit of script within our third person character blueprint. Now, the reason why I'm saying we should do it in the third person character blueprint is because that is where we're actually storing our health and our magic. It just makes sense and it makes things easier to communicate with those values if we're in the same blueprint. And the way that we're gonna set up this regeneration is pretty straightforward. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna run a check every couple of seconds to see whether or not the player has the maximum health or not. And if they don't have the maximum health, it's going to give them a little bit of health, basically just half a heart every three seconds until it uh, you know, reaches 
the full amount. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how you can do this. So find some space anywhere on your event graph and then with this we are going to be using event tick. And this event tick is basically going to be um, an event which is called every frame. Now we don't want it to be every frame because every frame um, if the player is playing at like 60 frames per second can be quite a bit and it's also variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a delay onto that and the delay duration is going to be how often you want it to regenerate that health. So for me, I'm going to set this to 3 seconds for now. And what we're going to do from here is simply run a check to see whether or not the player's health is greater than or equal to 5. So get your health and then do float greater than or equal to five. And the reason why I'm doing five is because that is the maximum amount of health that the player can have. And so essentially, if it is true and they've got the maximum amount of health already, we don't want it to do anything. If they don't have it, we want it to set the health variable to something else, something different. And that different amount is basically just going to be float plus float. And what we're going to do is get the original health value and simply add 0.5 onto that. So what this is going to do is add half um, of a heart every three seconds which is pretty straightforward so if we test this by hitting compile moving this all the way to the side and press play at the moment it's got half a heart give it a couple of seconds it's giving you more and more and more and it's going to keep on going up until you reach the maximum amount of health which is perfectly fine which is exactly what i want it to do now what i will do is I'll bring this event graph over here and just leave it simulating, uh, simulating and just make sure that after it gets to full health that it's going to stop changing that health value. So it's full now and now you can see this line of code is no longer being fired off. That is doing exactly what I wanted it to do which is perfect. So what we're going to do now then is we are just going to simply hook up the sound effect for this so you can hear it regenerating. So if you haven't done already, inside of your Zelda folder, create a new folder called Zelda Sound Effects and then just simply import all of these by dragging and dropping them into the content browser. With this, we are going to be using the LOZ underscore refill underscore loop. Select that within your content browser and then within our code we're simply going to type in, uh, right click and type in play sound 2D. And what this is going to do, if we press use selected asset browser for selection, is it's going to play that refill loop every time we add on some health. So if we compile this, press play, every three seconds now you can hear it going up bit by bit which is absolutely perfect exactly what i wanted it to do now you'll also notice just underneath the health bar we've got our magic bar and we also need to set up this regeneration system for this so we are basically just going to be copying the code so open up your third person character again inside of the event graph and what we're going to do is after this delay we are going to break this link by holding down alt and left click what i'm doing here is i'm actually going to add in a sequence node this sequence node is going to allow me to execute a series of pins in order so it's going to be it's going to allow me to you know use two things from this event tick instead of one so i can regenerate the health and then i can also regenerate the magic so for then one, I'm going to do the health, which is this stuff here. And then above this, I'm just going to do the same thing, but for the magic. So branch, check to see whether or not the, uh, the magic, so the float, is greater than or equal to 
with the original magic value in the one. So if magic is greater than or equal to the maximum value, for the magic it's one. So I'm gonna hook this up in here. On the false, I'm gonna tell this to set magic. And this magic is simply gonna be float plus float. And then get your magic value into the first one. And then into the second one, we are going to add a 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is 10% because one is the maximum value. And then lastly, we are just gonna tell it to play this sound. And what you should have is a nice looking piece of code that looks a little bit like this. Now what you guys might wanna do is select your delay and press C to comment it and just type in um, regen time and then over here where you've got these two boxes for the plus you might want to comment that and just type in regen amount and just do the same thing for both of those just so you know exactly where the things that you need are so if you later on want to change the regen amount for the health and for the magic you can find it quite easily instead of looking for all of this code and trying to understand it again you've got regen time regen amount and it is just that simple so if you compile this minimize it and go back into your game now both your health and your magic should be going up regenerating and doing exactly as it is told. So this is working and it's all good. We have made loads and loads of progress in today's video. So I am actually going to end off the video here. Once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreons that have made this video possible and also all the awesome support as well. Once again though, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.